March is a big month for Verity Media and Social Media Magic. We have all kinds of awesome events going on to help you up your social media marketing game. And now more than ever, with the acquisition of TPT by IXL, all of the algorithm issues and just the host of problems and changes that are coming with running an online business, it is more important than ever to have ways to build funnels and drive traffic to your offers that are either hosted on your website or at least hosted on a platform you can control. And that is a big focus. We're gonna show you how to do that with Instagram throughout the month of March. You can come join one of our 30 minute workshops. They're only $7, they're pitch free, and you'll come away with tangible, practical tips. And if you're in the content club, you get an even better deal because you get access to all of these recordings from the workshops in the Value Vault. If you're not already in the content club, just DM me content on Instagram and I'll show you where to go and how to join. We'd love to see you in there. We also have a three-day challenge happening March 28th through 30th, 2023. So if you're not sure what you need to focus on yet when it comes to your Instagram marketing, the challenge will be great because we're gonna go over the foundations of setting up and optimizing your profile and helping you figure out exactly what to post and when to start driving traffic to your resources with Instagram. Are you ready? You can find all of the information in the show notes of this episode, or you can DM me on Instagram over at Brittany for Lenich. Now let's get on with the show. Hello and welcome to the Social Media Magic Podcast, the perfect podcast for TPT sellers, teacherpreneurs, and teacher business owners who consider themselves to be introverts. Each episode shares all kinds of ideas, tips, tactics, and strategies to help you make more sales and grow your community on social media. Without further ado, let's get on to today's episode. Hello and welcome or welcome back to the Social Media Magic Podcast. I'm your host, Brittany Verlinich. I'm a content strategist, social media manager, and an overall marketing nerd, and I'm so glad you're here. It is not lost on me that you're choosing to spend part of your day with me listening to this episode, so it is my goal always to make sure they are jam-packed with value and quick wins. So let's talk Instagram. We are in a series right now, so if you haven't listened to those episodes yet, go look at the ones just before this. I have one about an Instagram strategy for small businesses in 2023, so definitely go listen to that. You're also going to want to listen to the one about getting more reach on your Instagram reels and on your carousel posts because the strategies are slightly different for each type of content. And even though carousel posts and feed posts are really similar, we're going to share some things right here that are a little different from the carousel posts that I didn't mention before. And they might possibly work for either one, but they're especially important when you only have one image for a feed post because you don't have that extra chance for exposure that you do with the carousel post because. When you have more than one slide in a carousel post, you have another chance for Instagram to push that post out, showing one of the other images aside from the main one to the other viewer. So you only get one chance at the feed post. That means we have to be really strategic with them. So let's dive right in, shall we? So first, let's make sure that you know the difference between a feed post or a photo post and a carousel post. So with a carousel post, you have more than one slide or image. You can have up to 10 per post. With a feed post, it's just one single image. So if you were to go click on that little plus sign and go to feed, unless you click on that little circle that has multiple images, kind of hard to explain on a podcast, then you'll only be able to add one image. So we want to make sure that image is jam-packed with value. A couple of things with that, because I know it's hard to be like, well, what's value? How do I make this more valuable? Try to put yourself in the shoes, in the perspective of the person who's scrolling across content. They might not even be looking for you specifically. They might just be mindlessly scrolling to relax, and they come across your post in their scroll. When they see it, what is their initial reaction? If it's a pretty post, like even if it's just a photo that's visually appealing, you might get a like. You might get someone commenting on that. Maybe, especially if they like you and they know you and they want to support you, maybe you'll get a couple of fire emojis, who knows? If you want true interaction and engagement, people leaving thoughtful responses, people sending you DMs to ask about links to resources they want to buy, sales inquiries, asking to get on a sales call with you, getting on a discovery call. If you want those kinds of responses, we have to put just as much energy and intention into the actual creating of the content and posting of the content that we get, right? We have to have that equal energy exchange there and value exchange. So a couple of things you can do when we're just talking about the graphics of the single post itself are thinking about ways you can add value to the post. So even if they didn't make it to the caption, they're still feeling like you are an authority, you know what you're talking about, and that they're gonna get value from you if they keep following you or if they even just go down to read. Because remember, people are making all kinds of micro decisions on social media. We do that all the time. 
whether or not to like it, whether or not to keep reading it, whether or not to follow. These are all little mini micro decisions. So the easier we can make it for them to make those decisions, the better. One thing you can do is just have like a semi-transparent overlay with some text. Maybe that tells a story of the image or gives them some additional value that's not found in the caption. Because we don't want to repeat ourselves too much. It's like people's time is just super valuable. So we always want to show that there's always more. There's always more because there is. Even if you rephrase something you say often because people are going to eventually hear the same thing over and over again, that can be a kind of comfort as well. But how can you reframe it? How can you say it in a different way? What can you do to grab their attention and make them interested enough, maybe even evoke emotion, get them intrigued or excited or curious or maybe angry? Maybe you are here to provoke anger about a certain cause and to get them to respond to something. It's totally up to you. Maybe you have a pillar of your content that has to do with the environment or politics or faith, religion, maybe just something controversial in the teacher space. There are so many things that could be. What can you do to convey that in the image itself? And when I say a photo or feed post, it doesn't always have to be a photo itself, like of a live photo. It could be a mock-up. It could be a graphic post. I do recommend, though, if you're going to use a template, try to switch it up. Try to make it as different from the template as possible. Because remember, if you're using the template pretty much as is, so is everybody else. You don't want for your content to just look like everybody else's. You want it to be uniquely branded and messaging just sounding like you because you want for them to be able to create a connection to you and your brand. So when they see a post like, oh, that's Brittany or like, yep, that's something Brittany would say or like, yep, that's what Brittany always says. You want for it to sound like that to them. So now that we're assuming we've done that, assuming we have this beautiful image or graphic that really evokes emotion that gets them to read the caption, what do we want for them to happen now, for them to do now? What can we do in the actual copy or text of the caption That is honestly similar to carousel posts. You want to make sure that you're using keywords. You want to be able to get SEO to that post. But some other things that you could try too, aside from strategic hashtags, aside from keywords, is geotagging. Geotagging isn't always relevant, especially if we're selling digital products because everything we're doing is online. But it might be. You never know. Especially if if from the travel space, like geotagging is really important because we're showing the restaurants we've been to, hotels we've stayed at, and stuff like that. But in the TPT space or with any kind of digital products, you can still build relationships because you're showing a connection to them. I am from the Salton Sea. And if you don't know where that is, that is, that's okay. But if you've ever heard of Coachella Fest or Stagecoach, then you might go, oh yeah, I've been there or I've heard of that. Yeah, that's where I'm from. So when I tell people that Coachella Fest actually isn't in Coachella, I remember that post getting a lot of engagement because they're like, what? And I'm like, no, Coachella is a town that's next to it. Coachella Fest is in India. Just a silly thing like that can really create connection. And also think about it. If I was to post about going to Stagecoach, I might have someone say, oh, I love country too. Seems silly, but people are coming on Instagram and honestly, social media in general for connection. So how can you embed more of yourself, more of that human connection into the posts you're creating, whether they're photos, whether they're graphics, don't be afraid to show more of you and yourself, your personality to tell personal stories, connect with that person because You, at the end of the day, are selling something that's probably available very similarly in some form to what somebody else has to offer. So this is how you're going to stand out and set yourself apart. With geotagging, consider, can you tag relevant businesses? Even if it's not something directly related to what you're doing, they could be a partner. This is something that can happen. It doesn't always happen, but it's happened with me. There was this coffee shop that I went to a lot when I was visiting Tucson. My husband lived here like 10 years ago doing some kind of seasonal work. And so we started coming a lot and we'd always stay at this hostel and we went to the same coffee shop and we would tag them. And this was also in the very early days of Instagram, but they appreciated it. And so we would get some free stuff. I still get free stuff from hotels and stuff sometimes and I do this because one, that's social proof for them. The content that you're making, especially if you took a photo at a hotel or at a coffee shop, you show yourself working. So that's great lifestyle content for you and shows that you're a professional and behind the scenes, your business and all that. But also by tagging the business or giving them a shout out, that's something that they can use for their own social proof that they can share their stories. And also we could probably get some engagement from them. They'll like the post, they'll comment on it, they'll share it to their stories. You just never know. So it's always a cool nod to be able to tag other businesses. And it doesn't always have to be like a place either. You could tag other businesses that are related to what you do. I've seen this a lot where even if they're not doing a summit together, like, well, someone will just say, if you like X, follow Y. 
if you like A, follow C. What a cool thing you can do. And so you could even get together with a couple of other people who are in your space and you guys can agree, probably don't do it all at one time, but maybe over a series of 14 days, you guys can decide like who will tag who. And that way you can kind of give each other a nod and get more people to find out about your stuff. Or you could just start sharing to each other's stories, but tagging in the post is really effective. And also you can kind of get a double tag because you can tag them in the caption of the post itself. And then when you share the post to your stories or the slide to, or I should say the feed post to your stories, you can tag them again there on the story. So you get another chance to shout them out and then they can do the same for you. Okay, so now I'm getting a little more technical. I just wanna make sure for your settings that you are set up for success. And in my Instagram for Introverts course, I am showing all the tutorials. I'm gonna have content up on my YouTube soon that shows us in little bite-sized snippets. But one thing you wanna do is make sure everything is connected. So if you haven't already, I would make sure that your Instagram account is set to a business account. I would connect it to your Facebook business page. If you haven't made one, definitely go make one. And I would connect that to Instagram. I would also connect, if you have a Facebook group, make sure that's connected to your Facebook business page because when they're all connected, one, you can schedule content for all of them at the same time using the Meta Business Suite or Metricool or an app like that. But two, this makes sure that your post goes out to more than one place. So if you have your Instagram account connected to your Facebook business page and or to your Facebook personal profile, then you get that double exposure. Now I get that not everybody will want to have their Facebook personal profile connected, but I do think it's a trick that a lot of people are missing because, you know, whenever people aren't doing something, that is your way to stand out by doing it. So if you are willing to share on your personal profile a little more, I think it's a great way to get more leads, get more eyes on your content, get more sales and all that jazz. But if not, and if you just want to keep it separate and do that on your Facebook business page and connect that to Instagram, I would do that too if you haven't already. And then you can set it up so that anytime you post on Instagram, like for your stories, for example, it automatically goes to that Facebook account stories. And same thing for the feed post, it'll automatically go there. In fact, there was a recent update that even when you post to Instagram Reels, those Reels are now automatically posting onto whatever connected Facebook account there is. So keep it simple for yourself, especially if you're not able to hire help yet. Make sure you have those accounts connected so you can post in more than one place at one time. Going with that, you can share your posts in Facebook groups. Of course, if you have your own Facebook group, you can share it there. There are some ways to share it in your group. It doesn't sound so spammy. If you want to see an example of this and you're not already in my Facebook group, come and join us and look at what I'm doing. Don't just look at what I'm saying to do. Look at what I'm actually doing because I use the same strategies I'm talking about, but seeing what I actually do could just give you a better picture. So facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash audience and authority if you want to see that in action. Or you could just go search social media magic and you should see the group or look for Brittany for Lenich in that group. Sharing it in your own groups is great. And you could actually make it, if you have a app like Meet Edgar, you can actually cycle through where it shares that same Instagram post several times over a period of time. So like maybe you share it in a Facebook group today, your Facebook group, and then you set it in Meet Edgar. So three months later, it's going to share it again, which is great, especially if the subject of the post is evergreen. Again, that's a little more advanced. So if you're not there yet, that's okay. But your posts can live on and get more traction and Instagram can push them out. They can get kind of a second wind. You can also share them to other Facebook groups. Be careful here. You don't want to come off as spammy. You always want to honor the rules of the admins and the moderators who are running a group. But if you're organized, by the way, I have a resource for this. I forget to mention this a lot of times called the group scheduler tool. I know, super creative. (laughs) It's literally a Google sheet and some training, video trainings that go with it, but it actually shows you how you can organize and schedule content in other people's Facebook groups, which has been a big part of my success for several businesses I've had. It still works. It was more of a strategy in 2018, but it's something that's still really effective and it would be more effective if more people did it. So go check that out. Another thing is making sure that you ask for shares in your call to action. Don't be afraid to ask people to share your feed post to their stories or ask them to comment. There's so many different calls to action you can have. You can ask them to tag a friend in the comments or share it to their feed or send it to them. You could ask them to to DM this to them by clicking on that little airplane icon. They can send it to someone else's DMs. And then this is something that I've seen a few really savvy people do. This again, just echoes the sentiment of make sure that you have value everywhere. So you have a value pack caption. We know that there's a text limit. Sometimes I will intentionally try to go over it. So I will hit my max in the caption text limit, and then I will actually continue my thoughts of the post in the comments. One, this visually is like, 
wow, there's so much value here. She knows so much. She couldn't fit it into one post. But two, what it does is it adds comments to your post. So just kind of a double whammy there of being able to increase the engagement, which gets that post pushed out to more people, but then also showing that there's always more value. And the more that you can do, the more that you put energy and intentionality and strategy into your posts, the more likely you're going to get energy back in the form of likes, engagements, shares, click-throughs to your profile, DMs, all the stuff that we want when we're asking people to do something. There's an energy exchange there. One, we don't always want to be asking. We want to make sure we're give, give, giving. Two, that we're not just taking. But two, strategically to get people to give things. And I hate seeing it like that, get them to. We don't want to manipulate them. But someone's not going to want to do that if they've never gotten something from you. You know what I mean? Like if you're asking someone to stop their scroll leisurely and then go click on your website, there has to be a good reason. And they have to see evidence that you know what you're talking about, that you're someone who's trustworthy before they even go. So if you want to talk to me about this episode, I'd love to hear your thoughts. You can find me on Instagram over at Brittany Verlenich, or you can just reach out to me in the group if you're in there already. And if you need any of those links, you can find them in the episode description, in the show notes. You try the Instagram strategy and you get good results. I want to hear about it. And if you want more support with this, you can check out my Instagram for introverts course. The link should be in the show notes already, but if it's not, just send me a DM on Instagram asking for the course about, and I'll make sure you get the link. That's it for now. Talk soon. Mm-hmm.